That was over 5,000 feet per second. Welcome back to 3R Ballistics. And today what we have is a little bit of a reloading journey. Now, here on 3R Ballistics, you know, we have our outcast science. We do things a little bit differently. So, we have been reloading for a little bit. We've been doing the shotgun stuff. Um, and we decided to go ahead and try our hands at the 30 cal Sabo rounds. Uh, these have been around for quite a while. I believe even Remington uh, or one of the bigger brands loaded these uh, back in the 80s or 90s. I'll try to find some information and put it up here. And, um, but you can still get these little Sabo rounds to fit in a 30 cal. This is a 30 out six casing. There's a 308. And obviously the diameter is 308 so that the Sabo could fit in there. And what that allows you to do is put Typically, you'll see a 5.56 or a 223 round, a 22 caliber round. So, what you'll do is you'll get a 22 caliber bullet, place it in the Sabo, then you put that into your 30 cal. This is a 308, like I said. And you're able to push. A lighter weight projectile at a faster speed and that's what we have here we have already done quite a bit of testing we're sticking with the 30 out six we I'll go ahead and show you some of the pre-testing that we've done we're looking at trying to get around 4,000 4,100 feet per second we have some of these saboed 30 out six rounds sorry for the finger a little drone incident earlier but uh, okay you ready Okay, here we go. We'll go a little bit to the left center. Woo, 41, 59. Check the brass on that. We are still not even close to max pressure. Let me show you the chronograph just so I don't get any. Uh, why isn't it reading? 41.59. And you can see we've started out with the minimum powder load in the 30 out 6 and we were able to get 37, 3800 feet per second. Upped it a few grains, did a few little tricks and we were able to get up to 41.50 feet per second. And that was with this guy right here. This is a 27, 28 grain. It's a FN, it's a 5.7 by 28 uh, lead-free projectile. Now, while it is a green tip, it is not the M855. It is a 22 caliber projectile though, so that's how we were able to load it in here. These that we're taking out tomorrow to the rain, we're hoping to get. Okay, I'm sorry, we lost the audio here, but uh, what I'm basically saying is we're going for the max pressure and we're going to be pushing this 27 grain lead-free projectile hoping for somewhere in the 4800 to even possibly as high as 5000 feet per second and then we're going to move on to a little bit of a lighter powder load in the m855 which is a heavier projectile that is now a 62 grain projectile and we're hoping for somewhere right around 4100 feet per second as I mentioned, later on, we're going to be testing these against some level 4 body armor plates. We're looking for 42, maybe even up to 44, 4,500 feet per second. So let's get out to the range. Let's test what we have, and we'll go from here. Out at the range, we got some chronographs set up. We got two. We're going to see if we can record these. Again, these are... 27 slash 28 grain uh, FN LF 198, I believe, 198 LF lead free projectiles in a 30 out 6 Sabo. It's a little bright, sorry. <laughs> when we're done with these, 
We're going to go ahead and get the M855 in a 30-06 Sabo, hit the same targets. We have a level 3 AR500 plate. We have a 1-inch piece of mild steel and a few other things. So we'll go through, set these up, and start shooting. Okay, we have our first lightweight. We have a camera over here, hopefully recording all this. And the two chronographs. Okay, you ready? Okay, here we go. Woo! 5,000! That was over 5,000 feet per second. <laughs> Let's get this. 5,006 feet per second, it looks like. We'll have to re-fix that. But it did not go through. That is where we hit. Right where I was aiming. Did not go through this plate, but oh man, I could definitely feel a, a bulge on that. And that was aluminum. <laughs> That'll be interesting with the green tip. Okay, let's uh, move on to our next. Uh, uh. Okay, so we did have a slight overpressure uh, signs on the primer. We're going down half a grain on these next ones. We'll see, the Garmin didn't show anything, so hopefully on this next one, we'll go ahead and get a, a reading. We're gonna go on the, we're gonna go on the bottom right of that plate. Are you ready? Yeah, we're looking good. Okay, here we go. Let me take the safety off. Bottom right. Now here we're just looking for separation of the Sabo and the burn of the powder. We are going to go ahead and use the M855 green tip. We're curious about the speed. Again, didn't show pressure signs. Uh, I would say that's as fast as I'd want to go. We'll see where we get on that. I'm going to load this up on the mild steel. And here we go. Okay, now we got a reading on the Garmin. We must have had it in the wrong spot. 4,028 feet per second with an M855. At quite an angle, let's go see what it did. Again, at the muzzle, we're looking for efficiency and burn powder, which looks to be much better on the 62 grain in this load. So, that angle obviously did a number on this, but, uh, but we're not necessarily looking at shooting it straight on. We are going to get the AR500 quarter inch level 3 plate out here and see what it does to that. Here we go against the level 3 AR500 plate. We got things lined up. Let me see if I can line up the Garmin a little bit better again. Okay, we're going to go on the bottom right side of the plate. Here we go. Woo! 39, 63 feet per second. That's a little bit closer. The last one didn't show any overpressure signs. This one's not showing any overpressure signs. Let's go see what it did to the plate. Okay, walking up to this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna say we uh, 
we sail through that like uh, <laughs> like nothing. Wow. Woo. Ouch. That, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. Effective. Very effective. <laughs> On to the head. So, for our penetrating round, we have a vampire zombie head up there, but we're going to see what one M855 traveling around 3950 to 4000 feet per second does to this head. We are going to go for right above the bridge of the nose. Here we go. Oh, 28LF in here. We still want to try to get a chrono reading on the Garmin to see what we have. I put a can up there filled with water and an orange sticker. Okay, here we go. Orange sticker. No reading on the Garmin again. I could only assume that we're going over 5,000 feet per second. Okay, back from the range, and I gotta say, these projectiles performed pretty well. Pretty well. There are a few things I do want to point out. Uh, I don't think I stated this before, but the FNSS198LF is actually a hollow point. So I don't know if you can see that there, but that is a hollow point. Um, and it is labeled as 27 grains, and I kept saying 27 slash 28 because when I weighed them, they weighed 28 grains on the scale, but they're labeled as 27. So that just wanted to clear that up. Uh, the other thing is we recovered quite a few of the sabos. So, again, each one seemed to separate quite nicely. Yeah, let me see if you can. Each one seemed to separate quite nicely. You probably saw it in the slow motion. It uh, came in. A little after the shot so uh, kept the bullet straight we did a three shot uh, group I know accuracy was another big problem uh, that's going to be for a later video so I'll show you all that and that being said I also understand that a level three more than likely depending 
shouldn't be able to stop an M855 just out of an, out of an AR anyway. So we're just getting some baselines and that's a lot of what to, today's testing was. Uh, checking maximum powder loads. Uh, this has been a much longer process than what this video shows. Obviously, we've used different powders, different grain weights of projectiles. We're, we're learning. But in the end, this is just entertainment. I'm not here to explain the loads or show the loads. This is just for some testing that we're going to be doing down the road. I thought I'd bring you guys along, show you what it took um, to get to the 5,000 feet per second. Now, we weren't able to back that up, at least not in a verified with a chronograph recorded uh, shot. So we are going to go back to that also. Not sure why the chrono why the Garmin kept showing reading the 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 shot. It would show that that it saw it and then it wouldn't give us a reading. If any of you out there know why, let me know. Um, I can only assume it was over what it could read. I even tried one out to distance thinking that it needed more depth to, to give me a reading but that one didn't work either so we're gonna go back to that I, I want to verify this 5,000 feet per second uh, so that'll be in a, in a later video we were able to record 5,006 feet per second which is why I put it on the video unfortunately after that we had an incident <laughs> with the other chronograph doing during some testing and, and it uh, it stopped recording anything so that's why we mainly only got the the garment after that but for all those that have stayed till the end i appreciate it again i have some new merch i have some new hats and and some new stuff again i have a discount code with gunner optics if if that's your thing if you're looking for an lpvo use that code 3r ballistics get yourself some some discount on a great lpvo and until the next one.